<laughs> okay. Oh, you started it. Okay. Bye, everybody. It is June 21st, 2020. It is the first day of summer. I am Erica. This is Nicole. Nicole is coming to us live from Madrid, <laughs> Spain. A few hours earlier there. It's a little earlier here. I am in Brooklyn, New York, Bay Ridge to be specific, USA. <laughs> and uh, and we're we're still sort of um, in a, in in lockdown situations. Um, Nicole and I wanted to start doing a podcast uh, before this, and then this just became the topic, and we're we're rolling with it. I'm in my backyard. Nicole is in her apartment with her two lovely children and her husband. How are things there? Today marks a big day here. Today is the end of the quarantine here officially. The government decided June 21st, which is today, um, free movement within the country of Spain. So it's over. But with proceed, proceed with caution was what we were told. And I'm assuming caution means go do whatever the fuck you want because that's basically what I see. So I suspect we will be here come September, October on our couches once again. And I won't even see the, the light of day. But hey, who am I to judge what other people do? So that's <laughs> what's going on with the government's decisions on things. Within your own family, what is the decisions on how you guys are going to proceed for the summer? Good question. Well, I don't care what other people are doing because I'm smart enough to know that while the cases may be lower than they were, things don't stop from day to day, make a huge turn from one point to the next point. I think it's people just want to go out, drink their beers outside and go to bars, which is a big part of life here with your kids. And no, we will be going outside for our walks and we rented a house um, in July for a couple five days that has a private pool. It's in the middle of nowhere, barbecue, big field. And that's what we'll be doing. And then we'll come back and then we'll go again up north the end of August, same sort of situation without a pool. But I wanna be away from people. I, I don't wanna be near people until I have to be, which is September. Right. Let's let's also say that Nicole is a school teacher, so she is on on break for the summer anyway. Um, how is unemployment in Madrid? Is that been has that been affected by COVID? <clears throat> I mean, yeah. I mean, people are unemployment is at a high. Of course, I think that's pretty much the standard everywhere, isn't it? At this point, um, well, governments are. Or handling it different yeah right handling it differently i just found out too that i work in the university and i just found out that i will be going back i thought it was going to be online but it's going to be a strange situation 50 50 so let's say i have a class of 30 people 15 people will come one week and then the following week the other 15 come and while those people are at home they're watching me there's going to be cameras set up in the room but I'm not allowed to move from my spot, really. It's gonna be very awkward. I can't do too much moving around. I can't have students work in groups. It's gonna be very awkward. But you know what? I'm not gonna think about that until September, so. What about you guys? What are you gonna be doing? Because you're still, you're allowed to move around, but are you? In, I spoke with somebody that is a public school teacher and it uh, sounds like you guys are way more organized than they are. I'll just say that. It was... We will ha have phase two opening tomorrow in the city, which means that I, I think more businesses can open. I think restaurants can have their patio, outdoor seating. Uh, it's another layer of opening. Um, 
so all the plywood will be coming down maybe i don't know oh god okay. um, but you know like we've discussed it's a different situation here no one really ever completely locked down like you guys did i don't think um and and now it's just become a political thing if i'm wearing a mask i'm doing it because i hate the president and if i'm not wearing a mask I don't support Black Lives Matter. I don't know. It's a confusing. So, I mean, we're not going to get too political, but I just think that I can't believe that a health issue has gone that way. Yep. Yep. <laughs> it's like. Uh, so anyway. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Moving on. Moving on. Um, so let's talk about the summer. I mean, you and I have great summer memories. Right. So I was. Yeah. So. Nicole and I have known each other since we were at high school age, knew each other through college. And then when we got our like first jobs and stuff, uh, and Nicole was a school teacher, she had Fridays off and, or you had the summer off. Yeah. I was working at my nonprofit and we had summer Fridays um, because we, the, 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 foundation that I worked for really worked with a lot of universities. So the summers were slow. So um, it was, summer Fridays, you had to work one of the Fridays and just to man the phones. And then everybody had Fridays off for the three months of the summer. It was an absolute perk to that job. Um, oh, and I, okay. and I, no, I don't miss it. I don't miss it. I don't miss it. But, um, Fridays were very special for Nicole and I, uh, cause she would take the train from Queens early in the morning, all the way to Coney Island and I would get out there and meet her and we would lay on the beach all day during Coronas and people watch and then go to cha-chas and take one ride on the cyclone and go home. That's right. That, that was, those that's, were our friends. That's a good synopsis of how it went. Yeah. For a couple of years, it wasn't just like, it was like three or four years before Technical difficulties. Maybe pause for a sec. Um, I'm being told that you're unstable by Zoom. Now, <laughs> unstable. I know. <laughs> Not that I needed um, Zoom to tell me that, but okay. So, yeah. So basically, it was a few years <laughs> before that. But we would do it on weekends too. But the beauty of Friday was that it was kind of less trafficy there on Friday. So right. right, it was more our. We felt like it was like our own personal little beach. And any time, I don't know if this happened to you, but any time I told anyone outside of the city area, like, "Oh, I'm going to Coney Island," and I would say it with a lot of like enthusiasm, people would go, "Like, that's so gross there." And I said, "You're missing the whole point." I never said it was like a Mediterranean paradise. Like it's, it's the feel, it's the ambiance, it's the New York. Yeah. It's like, although if you go to one side or the other of like, right. The main Coney Island, if you go over to the, it was nice. There were nice, there's nice sections of the beach. It's, you know, and then it gets a little crowded and it does, you know. Yeah. But. And then, you know, it, it's a free for all at some points, meaning, you know, people behaving in ways you probably wouldn't behave. Anywhere. So let me, so, oh, oh, now it's telling me that my, my computer's getting hot because I'm in the sun. Um, okay. okay, so, am I still okay? Let me just move over in the shade a little bit. So I was, um, so this week I had helped a, a friend paint a mural. I'm, mm -hmm. We're going to get back to Coney Island. I've, I helped a friend paint a mural here in Bay Ridge. And um, I couldn't get out there on Monday. I got there on Tuesday. And um, it was like Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, her and I were um, uh, working on this wall. And on Tuesday morning, she said, oh, you should have been here yesterday. There were so many crackheads. There were people across the street smoking crack. There was, then they were all couples. And I said, oh, Krillers? <laughs> Now, mind you, 
the, that day, the only people that stopped by were her friends. And it was like, I didn't see those people. So I didn't get to see it myself. But mm -hmm. when I said Krillers, she kind of looked at me like, what the, what is that word? And it reminded me that that was a word that was unique to us. <laughs> You, you don't have that in your family? You don't say that? I mean, that's not part of your vernacular? That, what do you call them? Yeah. So we should tell everybody, what what is a kriller? Well, what is a kriller? Comes from the word krill, okay? <laughs> krill being the noun. <laughs> krill is like a bottom crawler. It is like uh, smaller than a shrimp. <laughs> literally a shrimp at the bottom of the ocean and it, it's it doesn't get much lower than that is what you, is where that comes from right and and I, you know what you just explaining that like it's like how does not uh, you know I, she looked at me funny anyway but i so, don't think the word krill is like a word people you i mean use it anyway, so that's what we call people and and, and um, you know, it, it does seem, at least in an um, city uh, environment, they usually travel in couples. They're, they're usually a couple because they're codependent on each other for, you know, obvious reasons. Mm -hmm. So there was a, um, so there was a krill couple. We would just call them krillers. Go ahead. This is your story on the beach. No, one no, day. no. This is your story. Go ahead. Go ahead. Well, we were on the beach one day in Coney Island and these two krillers were um, asking us for SPF, right? Is that what yeah, they came, No, they came up and I think, I mean, we're going back now a long time. They asked for sunscreen. Okay. Yeah. And I think you were like, okay, yeah, we have, uh, I mean, they weren't, they weren't in good shape. We have SPF 30. I don't know, something to that extent. And I, it was it the woman that was like, what's that? Like, and you're like, what's what? SPF? Yeah, they had, and then the guy fell asleep or nodded out right there. He's like, he asked for sunscreen when I said SPF. He, they, like, they didn't, they were just, yeah, yeah. And then, and then you realize, oh, oh, I see who I'm talking to. And then, but they were both in their underwear. They weren't in bathing suits. That's and right, it, yeah. And, um, yeah, it, it, um, oh, yeah, that's, that's the, uh, origin of that word um i don't know if you remember this yeah, but sorry um when when violetta was born you sent me some things for her and in this package was a little stuffed animal like this big it, you better not drink when i say it and it was pink and it said krill on it <laughs> yeah that was, you knew that that was on purpose, right? Of course. Oh my God, I totally remember this now. So I worked at this foundation, it was a science foundation, and they were giving, okay, so somebody came to the office and they gave us all these little stuffed toys and they were little like microbes. And okay. uh. you know, it was, a, there was an amoeba, there was a, um, what's another small, like plankton? Yeah, yeah. Like yeah. small like microbial animals and they were stuffed animals and when i saw the krill i think i traded with somebody because i had to have it <laughs> oh my god i can't believe do you still have it no i don't i'm really oh my upset god. i think when i came there in 2010 i think it was on her shelf she wasn't, wasn't it on she was born in 2011 you had it, it you know you, you all those little frog things i think it was on the shelf oh, of the baby. frog thing it was like the size of a beanie baby kind yeah, of Yeah, right? yeah. That's what it reminded me of, one of those things. Yeah, that was on purpose. I remember that now. Of course it was. Oh my god. Oh. Yeah. Yep. Awesome. Well, but yeah, I it was had, like I, Go ahead. I had a great story too that you're just making me think of now. Another weirdo that was down there, but I'm not gonna mention like a couple of people you and I know. I won't mention names, but back in the day. Eduardo and I went to the to Coney with them and just for a joke, because I think like a previous time we had gone with them, the, this friend of ours was having a hard time like putting sunscreen on his back. 
So I made this funny invention, like really low budget. I took a skewer and I cut out like a, a kitchen sponge. Like a back scratcher? It looked like a back scratcher, but it had it was made of a sponge so that you could like Are you serious? Listen to this. This is great. So we made it and I'm the whole idea was that I was gonna break this thing out in the middle of our sunning ourselves. <laughs> so we're serious. So we're sitting there. He's about to put the sunscreen on and I'm like, I'm gonna break this thing out for a joke, right? I break it out. I'm like, do you need something? You need a little help? And I, I <laughs> give him the skewer with the, <laughs> this kitchen sponge attached to it. He, he laughed his ass off. But as this is happening, we see a guy in front of us all alone. I mean, he's like blobbing this stuff all over himself. And I'm like, he looks like he could use it. I'm going to go over there and offer it to him. And they're all like, oh, come on. Well, you know, I, I don't need a dare. So I walked over there and I said, <laughs> excuse me. Looks like you can use some help there. Now, I don't remember like where he was from. He, he, he didn't really understand. I think he was Russian. Maybe he was he, coming from the other beach. What's the other one? Brighton Beach. Came over and I gave him, so I said, use this. And he was like, he didn't realize that this was a joke. He got so excited by it. He was like, oh my God, thank you. He's like, I got a whole series of photos of him because somebody was like, he was like, of him like squirting it on himself and just like spreading it remember, all over. You remember the guy, the older guy that used to wash his feet all the time on Coney Island and he would just always be washing his legs and his feet? Do you remember that guy? No. I was thinking of, <laughs> I was thinking of word origins. Do you want to explain the, um, the origin of Donald Sutherland? <laughs> with yeah but with did first of all did that come from you or did that come from no that's you <laughs> that was you it that was, was me yeah. oh i didn't think i made that up that was I, your don't, I don't remember how it started but do you remember how it started <laughs> well it's just code it's code for yeah, I, know, I know what it's code for yeah for code. reefer and you just no. call it another one right it just no, is that's not it that's not it. Okay, so, so a friend of ours had another friend. I don't even know if it was a roommate or a friend. And they were smoking one day and they didn't she didn't really have much weed, but she had all the, the keef at the bottom of the the jar. Now, a little weed knowledge here. Keef is like the <laughs> the dust, right? The Yeah, the good stuff. The dust, the stuff that gets you oh. good. So so it was like Keith, Keith, and then we were like, like well, obviously Keith led to Kiefer Sutherland, but that's too obvious. So Kiefer went into Donald Sutherland. So we, every time we wanted to smoke, we would call it Donald um, Sutherland. Yeah, it was like code word for like, <laughs> hey, uh, Donald Sutherland. And that was like, we just knew. It's, it just became the word that just morphed yeah. into code. And that would be another thing you would say out of nowhere and you'd be like, uh, you don't, you don't use that in your everyday oh, language? You don't call, when I say Donald Sutherland, you don't know that that means you want to go smoke? <laughs> you don't do that in your family? I guess not. <clears throat> oh, God. First day of summer. Um, <laughs> are you doing anything to um, inaugurate this day, or what do you do? <laughs> oh, no, no, no. Um, I ordered some Juneteenth uh, uh, merchandise for, to support some independent uh, female artists. Good. And uh, that was what I did this weekend with the little bit of uh, uh, funds that I have. Helped, helped a, another artist this week. Um, I'm gonna be out there tomorrow with her. Um, she's, she's gonna let me play around with her drone to mm. get like a final shot. Like, to like and get the whole it's a long wall um and i'll bring my camera and hopefully get some shots tomorrow so yeah today is no today's just sunday Relax. 
Yeah. Same here. I have nothing, <clears throat> nothing going it, on. Yeah. So I, I don't really know what the difference is going to be between phase one and phase two here because it all just seems um, pretty crazy. Um, I'm not really interested in going and sitting at a restaurant. I don't under, you know, that's not a desire I have because I just, no matter what, I, I don't think this is under control at all. And um, I'm good with uh, yeah. see, well, I, seeing a friend, maybe one-on-one, -on -one, you know, or whatever, but I don't want to go sit in a restaurant. My thing is why do anything that's not really necessary or essential? That's the word, essential. Mm -hmm. Um, whatever. I mean, uh, this whole entire time, I've been more than happy to be away from people. Yeah. Oh, you're frozen. Hello. Oh, you froze up again. So you froze. You. You froze yes. up for a second. Were you, so were you unstable? You. No. So I'm we were unstable. Go ahead. We were painting the wall and this like nice lady comes by and this is so beautiful. It's so good that you're doing this for the community. And we're, oh, thank you. Thank you. And then she immediately goes into, because it's so awful what's going on in the world right now and just starts going into these riots and these rioters and these looters. And, they, uh. and we just turned and just faced the wall and just ignored her and kept going and um so yeah that it's i just i don't want to talk to anybody that i don't know <laughs> that's how i feel like this is the perfect like, excuse somebody's like chatting with you in the neighborhood like at a store or something i'm like don't do it don't go there don't do it you don't know me yep and I don't care about the distance either. I don't, I don't want to be two meters away from you or 20 meters away from you. I don't want to see you. So I'm totally fine with that. It's a perfect excuse. And to all the people out there who just can't bear to change their plans. And uh, I have a lot of those people around me, actually. I'm not going to name names, but um, yeah, I hope you get coronavirus. Yeah. Well, yeah, I mean, if it, it if it's going to start spreading again and you just don't yeah. even know who was around who and, you know. Exactly. And that's been my argument the whole time. I'm not going near you because I don't know where you've been. Well, actually, I do. I know that you don't follow the rules, so. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, this, I'm starting to get into the sun. We, we, we went good 25. I'm, I'm keeping my eye on my watch. Good, good. Um. I'm trying to think if I have a closing thought on this week. This week was a little weird, but I think they've all been a little weird. They're probably going to continue to be weird. So uh, uh, um, I'm going to listen to some Hotter Than July, uh, Stevie Wonder, in honor of you, Nicole, today. Nice. I think we all should just listen to, you know, more, I mean, there's going to be more music playing in my house. Less... Uh, Less podcasts. I've been listening to a lot of podcasts, but I think I just we're just mm -hmm. gonna have some music playing while we're getting things done around the house, and that's definitely making me feel better. I like that you said that because I'm on, I'm with you there. I've been listening to podcasts, and I'm I'm at a point now where I really only care to listen to maybe one. Besides, yeah, that. I mean, I you know, and, and I, I'm yeah. limiting, limiting like the news. In you know, I'm paying attention to what's going on. Jeez, man, you gotta like step away um mm -hmm. so all right well we shall reunite see you next week yes we will have I'm a nice i'm gonna be in this hammock once once the shade moves i don't want to be in the direct sun but like in an hour or so this tree is gonna shade it and and i'm gonna be in the hammock for the rest of the afternoon okay so this is uh par for the discourse and i'm gonna leave you with these words of wisdom don't forget your spf See you next Word. week. <laughs>